Hey there traders, Andrew Bloom here. Been some time since my last update on my 100k funded trading plus challenge. And for those of you who've been following along, you know just how much this entire process has been quite a slog. You know those sitcom episodes when everything that could possibly go wrong goes wrong? Yeah, that was my experience with my first FTP challenge. Since my last post, I inevitably continued facing losses and hit the max drawdown of 6%. Frankly, in the most Buddhist sense of the word, this was my karma. This outcome is appropriate given the actions that I decided to take. What ultimately failed my challenge wasn't the trading strategy. It was my trading behavior. I am not surprised that this challenge resulted in a failure because the decisions and actions I made during the challenge were turbulent and not exemplary of profitability. Quite frankly, I feel relieved to be done with this challenge so that I can take some time to reevaluate my trading plan and shift to an approach that better complements my lifestyle and availability. In this video, I want to share with you three main things that had the greatest impact on this losing outcome so that you can better prepare yourself when you decide to take a long-term challenge without a time limit. For those of you not familiar with Funded Trading Plus, they are a prop firm that lets traders test their trading skills with a challenge in order to become a funded trader with an account size that most traders cannot amass on their own. What's unique about FTP is that they're one of the few prop firms out there that offer a trading challenge without a time limit. Most firms expect you to quickly hit a, a very large profit target in just a couple of weeks, but FTP is more realistic in allowing you to responsibly trade your strategy over the long term. If you'd like to get 10% off of your challenge, be sure to use the DFX affiliate code DFX10 at checkout. To be clear, I am an affiliate of this prop firm and I decided to take this affiliate stance because I really do believe this is a realistic prop firm model. So dealing with a losing streak during a 30 day limit challenge versus one without a time limit is a completely different experience since on the one hand, you don't have to fret to chase a profit target in a short amount of time. Yet on the other hand, you still need to be willing to be patient over the long run in order to work your way out of a drawdown should one occur. It could take weeks or months in order to do so. Thus, you need to be willing to go into this challenge style without expectations for how long it will take. From day one of this challenge, unfortunately, I was in a drawdown. Here are the three main reasons why my challenge failed. I hope you and I can both learn from these mistakes in order to be successful with FTP in the future. The first reason, reason number one, is that I changed the time I traded without properly backtesting whether this strategy would work as well for the new session. For the last few years, I've made a routine out of getting up at 5 a.m. Pacific Standard Time to scalp the 15 or 5 minute charts during the New York session. As I was just starting this challenge, I lost my ability to wake up at 5 a.m. Some of you may know that I've been struggling with a chronic illness that affects my nervous system for the last six years, and insomnia is one of its main debilitating symptoms. More often than not, I needed to use the morning hours to finally get to sleep or to catch up with a nap. I decided it was time for me to stop forcing myself to wake up exhausted and foggy in order to trade the New York session. Instead, I decided to switch to trading the Asia session, which opens around 5 p.m. my time. While this approach worked far better for my health and lifestyle, the trending strategies that I frequently used during the New York session didn't quite translate so well. I didn't do enough backtesting ahead of time to check whether I needed to make any adjustments for this session. I discovered some important tweaks like aiming for smaller take profit targets later on during the challenge, but by then it was already too late. The main takeaway from this is to be sure to go into your trading challenge with your trading strategy and routine already set in place. If you don't already, make sure your style and approach actually work with your personal and work schedule so as to allow you the most energy, focus, and availability to trade. Next, another major issue I caused for myself was that I tried to introduce a new strategy during the middle of the challenge. For a few weeks, I decided to try out a little scalping strategy at the end of the New York session, which I could trade shortly after waking up around 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I back tested this for about two months worth of data and decided to run with it. That was a mistake. Any new strategy ought to go through a period of demo testing, live testing with a small account, and then be evaluated before taking it live on a challenge. 
I acted out of desperation and impulsivity. I was trying to trade with something I didn't really know would work. Similar to the first reason, the main takeaway from this is that you should only use a strategy on a challenge that you are familiar with and have experience trading. You need to know it's profitable ahead of time. I made the mistake of trying something new without giving it a proper trial period. I hope you can see the theme in all of this. The biggest factor that will determine your success is your ability to stay consistent. Yes, markets change. Yes, things will go wrong, and you may need to shift your plan. But overall, it's consistency that will win. This is how some traders can remain profitable with strategies that seem way too simple. The biggest hit to your account has nothing to do with strategy and everything to do with behavior management. Lastly, with those two big changes already in place, I lost my ability to remain disciplined during trade time. I closed some trades early for fear of it turning around. My trading decisions were riddled with anxiety and skittishness after facing compounding losses. I was scared to let a trade run to its intended profit, and this brought down my reward to risk ratio. Inversely, I also jumped into trades that didn't fully meet my trading criteria as I felt I needed to perform every day in order to do something to turn this around. It's such a common human experience to want to do more when things go wrong. With trading, it's actually the contrary action that works. That is, to not react, to do less, to step away and take a break instead of trying to force an outcome. When you take a challenge that doesn't have a time limit, know that it's okay to take breaks if your discipline is slipping. You can pause for a week or two to gather yourself and your emotions before getting back into the market. Again, be willing to be patient and to let the markets decide when you pass the challenge. As you can see, this is why I am relieved to be done with this massive failure of an experience. It shows me all the ways that I cause some of my own losses and also shows me the ways in which I can better prepare myself for the next challenge. Because of all that's transpired, I am ready to finally shift to higher time frames and make sure my trading routine fits to my health needs and lifestyle instead of forcing myself to trade at a seemingly optimal time. I've decided to move to trading the day charts, which I can check during the New York close, which is 2 p.m. my time, and a time of day I am certain to be well awake and energized enough to trade. If you want to know more about my reflections on making this shift, I suggest reading the article I wrote about moving from scalping to a style of trading that fits somewhere between day and swing trading, and you can find the link to that in the description box below. So overall, before you take your next challenge, I suggest waiting until you are solid in your trading routine at a time that works for your lifestyle, using only a strategy or strategies that you have experienced trading and know to be profitable, and to manage your drawdowns or periods of breaking your trading discipline by taking time away from the charts and not rushing the process. I'm glad I get the opportunity to be real and transparent with you, to share some of the very relatable experiences most traders face, even years into building this skill set, and to remember that any major setback can be turned into a great trading lesson should you take the time to evaluate what happened. You can always learn from your losses. Thanks for taking the time to listen to my story, and I wish you all nothing but the best of strength and luck with your trading and your prop challenge experiences. I'll see you all in the markets. Take care.